Now I know, first glance, you're like, no way. Ain't no way possible, right? I said the same thing as well. Can't be, not possible. Are you crazy? But then I sat back for a second and I thought about it. I was like, hmm, you know, 550 year old man has been found in Japan. How come is he still alive? Now, then I started thinking about these seven, eight foot people walking around these days, different shows you watch, you've got talent, Ripley's Believe It or Not, different things like that. You look at some of these sports players, the sizes of them. I'm like, <laughs> you know what? Just maybe. Who knows? Who knows? So I'm definitely here to see what this video about to tell us. So if you knew, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Join the fam. Let's check this out. On May the 17th, 2022, a Venezuelan Juan Vicente Perez Mora is recognized by Guinness World Records as being the oldest validated living person in the world as he turned 113 years old. And it's kind of weird because in the Dainichibo Temple in Japan, they found a monk named Shinyokai who's already five times older. He recently celebrated his 550th birthday and it deserves a birthday cake. Ah! Bloody hell! Yeah, I'm not sure he can even blow out the candles. 550, like what's going through your mind at that age? You know what I mean? Do you even call what you have at this point wisdom? What's beyond wisdom? You know what I mean? He's beyond wisdom. Like the things he's seen, let's, let's, let's continue to make sure this is true. Ah! Bloody hell! Yeah, I'm not sure he can even blow out the candles. I'm not even sure he's still breathing. I mean, it's just a mummy. So why is it considered alive? That's what we're gonna figure out today. You're about to find out how will eating needles make you immortal? Why did the Japanese monks drink lacquer? And most importantly, how did the monk manage to stay alive for 550 years? say eating needles did he he's did he say eating y'all heard eating needles right i'm not tripping you know what i mean i'm gonna go upstairs and get a couple q-tips and clean my ears out and make sure i heard thing i'm hearing correctly eating needles mummies still alive oh this is about to get crazy <laughs> It was a typical Japanese farmer's day. Shin Yokai was walking, carrying a vessel full of plant fertilizer. But suddenly, he accidentally grazed a passing samurai, and the contents of the vessel spilled right on the warrior. Deeply offended and angered, he attacked the poor man, but he turned out to be not so helpless. Defending himself, the farmer killed the warrior. A terrible sin haunted him, so Shin Yokai became a monk. The life of the Buddha's follower was difficult, as there was a bad harvest in the country, and the monk suffered from hunger. But he managed to benefit spiritually from the situation by giving up creature comforts, including food. At the age of 96, he underwent a ritual of self-mummification and froze in meditation for many years. In this kind of limbo, the monk remains in the Dainichibo temple to this present day. And 550 years is not the limit because Shin Yokai is considered to be still alive. What? What? You don't- I've heard of this before though. This isn't, I don't know if it was the same person, but I've heard of this before about this happening. But see, in my mind, I was thinking, you know, an actual live, real live person. And they're trying to say he's still alive some kind of way. So I'm waiting for them to figure that out. But in my mind, I was thinking my my reasoning to believe this could possibly be true or be crazy was that a lot of people who are up there in the hundreds, they don't even know. And I ain't going to say a lot of people, some they don't even know how old they were because of their records. Like some people are like, okay, I think I'm 120, 
but they didn't keep records of everything or their records aren't found and they're having to do different tests on them to be able to try to figure out a range of where they could possibly be as far as age go. So considered to be still alive. What? What, you don't believe in this legend, but the followers of Buddhism consider it a reality. I mean, here is Shin Yokai in person. You can even meditate with him. Buddhists believe the monk is in a deep trance. Otherwise, how can we explain the fact that the body hasn't decomposed for more than half a millennia? Well, a normal corpse starts to rot after just 24 hours. Besides, we don't know how old he really is. The monk doesn't have a single document confirming his identity and... See what I'm saying? He is. The monk doesn't have a single document confirming his identity and date of birth. For example, an Indonesian named Mba Gotho claimed to be 146 years old mm -hmm. because he was born in 1870. While in Indonesia, formal registration of births began only in 1900. Hey! That's why nobody believed in the old man's incredible longevity, and Gotha was deemed a liar. But the examination of documents proved the data to be genuine. All right. Strangely enough, the person who lived more than 100 years was subjected to such a detailed verification procedure. But nobody has any question for the 550-year-old monk. Oh, oh. But what if the method of preserving the monk's body really works? So how did the monk manage to keep his body in relatively good condition and keep it from decomposing? It's all thanks to Soku Shinbutsu. It's a practice of Buddhist monks that involves voluntary self-mummification. And it's not just about discipline, meditation, and contemplation. The physical component of this process can indeed explain the secret of perfect mummification from a scientific point of view. It all begins when monks are still alive, but they feel there's little time left. Then they start a slow process of starvation and stop eating barley, rice, beans, basically all the products that contribute to weight gain. The monks go on to a diet called mokujikigyo, literally meaning eating a tree. This special diet consists of whatever is predominantly found in a nearby forest, such as tree bark and roots, nuts and berries, and even pine needles. Even river stones were found in the stomach of one of those mummies. And that's the first secret. Because the thing is, apart from the fact that this type of food strips the monks of their body fat and muscles, the body loses nutrients and moisture. So there's no suitable environment for bacteria, and the rock process doesn't start. This diet usually lasted a thousand days, although some monks repeated the course. Ooh, I just did a, a 10 day fast not too long ago and it, 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 it almost nearly took me out like a thousand days. Fam, I've got to get to a better dedication in my life, fam, on different things, fam. This is just proving that I, I got some a few things to work on two or three times before embalming they probably drank tea made from urushi it's the sap of a chinese lacquer tree usually used to make lacquer imagine drinking bottles of nail polish one by one but that ingredient was necessary to make the body toxic to insects. Thus, the monk could have remained in a state of meditation for hundreds of years, and his body would have remained intact. That's the second secret. The third one is to run lit candles along your body to dry your skin. And the last point of Soku Shinbutsu involves something that will help us live beyond our death. Japanese Buddhist monks had their own unique method of mummification. In addition to diet and meditation, they used cold. Natural mummification is very rare and requires extreme temperatures and dry air to preserve the body. So before dying, the monks spent time in a small, tight pine box, which parishioners lowered about three meters into the ground. After death, a monk was placed in an underground room for three years to keep drying. 
the body became a statue frozen in prayer. This method is also used in cryonics, which involves having your body and brain frozen. It's based on the hypothesis that a person can be revived after freezing. All this is done with- See, that's another thing I wanna get into discussing if I ever find a video that I'm allowed to, to react to, man. I wanna check out something on cryostation, like more stuff on cryostation. So I feel like that's gonna have a huge impact going forward. I don't know why, but ever since I saw it with Sylvester Stallone in Demolition Man as a youngin, I, I've thought about that. With the expectation that scientists will make progress in this sphere in the future. In the United States, 143 companies are involved in cryogenic freezing and the market volume is estimated at $1 billion. The primary purpose of this procedure is to freeze life in your body. This is done by substituting blood with special solutions so that it doesn't turn to ice when frozen. Depending on how much money you have, cryonics clinics can suggest two possible options to spring for. The first one is to get your whole body frozen. Maybe in a hundred years, your body can be rejuvenated or cured using nanoparticles and nanobots. The second one is to preserve only your head and perhaps in the future you'll grow a whole new torso from your own stem cells the assumption that such a method would work dates back to the 18th century however little progress has been made since then no client has yet been unfrozen but would y'all do this put it in the comments say i need to know i mean you 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 go to the dmv you get your license you say you're an organ donor some people donate their body to science so would you do this and chance it? I gotta know. Researchers believe that future scientific advances in this field will help bring frozen patients back to life. Does this mean that Shinyokai's mummy can be brought back to life as well? Like, would you even be prepared for what you gotta go through mentally if you were taken away from everybody you ever known or you chose to be away from everybody you ever known and then awaken, I don't know how many years ahead, life has changed as we know it. Things are like, like people forget about what it could do to you mentally, if you still have those memories. It's a lot of ifs. Russian scientists studying Siberian permafrost determined that an organism can come back to life and even function after death. In the ice, they found a bacterium which turned out to be alive after 30,000 years of freezing. After the defrost, it immediately started hunting amoebas. A bacterium needs very little to exist, unlike such a complex living organism as a human. But the monks greatly simplified their biological needs, which might have allowed them to be so well preserved, but not alive. Forensics concluded that Shinyokai is dead. This conclusion was based on the understanding of death by an ordinary human being and modern medicine. The monk's biological functions have ceased, and he has neither pulse nor breath. But on the other hand, patients who consented to have their bodies cryogenically frozen are in the same condition. They're not dead, but rather deanimated. In other words, they're in sleep mode. What if the dead monk could be brought back to life just like a frozen person? The same opinion is shared by Buddhists. They believe the monk went through Sokushinbutsu to wake up from his sleep. It was not for nothing that the special mummification technique kept Shin Yokai's body intact for 550 years. And if they're right, it's entirely possible that one day, this mummy will open its eyes. The ritual of self-mummification is so popular among Buddhist monks that this phenomenon was even leaked to TikTok. In these shots, a monk named Luang Fo Yai, aged 109, is in the final stages of his Sukushimbutsu. Perhaps if at least one monk agreed to undergo the ritual under the supervision of doctors and scientists, the secret of eternal life would be revealed to us, huh? Are you ready to eat needles and stones and drink lacquer for immortality? 
amaze us in the comments. Also, check out this video and find out how exactly. Wow. What do y'all think? Like, that's just mind blowing. Will it become a trend? I think it already has. You know, for me, anybody else who did it started the trend. It don't take much more for me. Two people, that's a trend to me in this situation. Wow. What do y'all think, man? I'm, 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 I'm floored. I am floored about this. Just the whole process, man. The whole process of it. Wow. Listen, man, y'all get at me in the comment section, bro. I'm going to have to go show Queen this video real quick. And uh, stick around and stay tuned, man. Leave a like. Till the next one, I'm gone. Peace.